Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. Thank you all so much for your patience. My life has been a little bit chaotic, but I'm finally back with a new video. Today I'm sharing a new episode of my Tired Mama Meal series. I'll link the first one down below if you missed it, but in this series I'm sharing quick and easy meals that you can feed your family when you are exhausted from the day, too tired to cook, but you still have to make it happen. These are all pretty effortless and quick, so I hope you leave to Today's video with dinner inspiration for those busy weeknights ahead. So this first recipe I saw on Pinterest, it's called cheesy beef sandwiches. I'll put the original recipe that I was going by down below, but I kind of adapted it to what we had on hand already. So I'm getting started with a pound of ground beef here in my skillet. We're gonna get that browned up. To my ground beef, I'm gonna add one chopped green bell pepper. Mine actually wasn't quite a whole because we had used some for another recipe. So I just finished what was left. I didn't have any fresh onion, so I sprinkled in some dried minced along with some garlic powder and I just let that cook until the beef was completely browned through and the bell pepper was softening up. So y'all tell me in the comments if there's a such thing as adding too much cheese to a recipe. I honestly didn't think you could, but I believe I did on this one. The recipe calls for one to two cups of cheddar. Again, I was using what I had, so I used Colby Jack plus a little bit of mozzarella that was left that I was just trying to use up. And I think this ended up being a little too much cheese in my opinion. And maybe I should have just used cheddar and that would have made a difference. I don't know, but it was super thick. This was still a really good recipe. We actually ended up putting a little on a piece of flatbread and popping it in the oven for a couple of minutes and that was good too. But the recipe has this served on hoagie rolls. I used hamburger buns and we just had some chips on the side. This next night, it had been so hot on this day. I had also been cleaning the house, so I was completely done for, but I was craving a really good salad. So that's what we did on this night. For the kids, I just heated up some frozen chicken nuggets. It would be nice if my kids ate salad, but they do not. They are super picky. So I just picked up these steak strips from Walmart. I'm gonna pop these into the air fryer while I prep the rest of the salad. My favorite lettuce for a salad is hands down romaine and I did already wash that so I'm going to give that a chop and over to our big mixing bowl. If you haven't gotten these big bowls from Sam's yet, you are missing out. We use them for everything. This one makes the best salad bowl because it is so big, but I'll try to find them and link them down below for y'all. They come in a set of different sizes. I think there's four, maybe five in there and they also have different prints, but they are seriously the best bowls ever. You'll have to let me know what your favorite salad toppings are, but on mine, I like bacon bits, croutons, some kind of cheese, and I also like dried cranberries. And I prefer to have homemade ranch, but if I'm gonna eat store-bought, I like to go with Ken's Steakhouse, so that's what I was having tonight. And I also like honey mustard sometimes. It just depends on what kind of salad I'm having. So really easy dinner. And like I said, for the kids, they just had some frozen nuggets because they aren't about to eat a salad. On this night, we had a spaghetti squash we needed to use. Someone had gave it to us and we really needed to go ahead and use it up. And my favorite way to cook a spaghetti squash is to throw it in the crock pot for a few hours. They can take a really long time in the oven and with this heat, I was not about to do that. So I'm just placing the spaghetti squash down into the crock pot, pouring in a cup of water and setting that on high for about three hours. And when you can pierce it with a fork with no resistance, that's when it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it over to a sheet pan. I'm gonna cut off the ends and then long ways down the middle to where I can lay it open. I 
spaghetti squash also has a lot of seeds so I just took a cookie scoop and scooped out all the seeds that I seen I didn't get every single one because that's near about impossible to do but I don't think they hurt you if you eat them nothing's happened to me yet so once I have just about all the seeds removed I'm taking a fork and fluffing up the spaghetti part it looks just like spaghetti noodles and you can use your pasta sauce of choice I think mine was great value but I'm just pouring that over the spaghetti squash I topped it with mozzarella and I'm gonna pop that in the oven just until the cheese melts And because my kids don't eat spaghetti squash, I did boil them some noodles real quick and they had that with pasta sauce. On the side, I toasted up some garlic bread in the air fryer and we had some leftover salad from the night before. If you haven't tried spaghetti squash before, try it. It is so, so good. The carbs are a lot lower than pasta and it's much, much better for you. Next up, I'm gonna be making a BLT pasta salad. I can link the recipe I followed down below, but I see this everywhere. It's a really popular pasta salad right now. Plus who doesn't love a good pasta salad in the dead summer heat? So you'll need some shell pasta. I've also used bow tie, but I really don't think it matters what you use. So just use your pasta of choice. Cherry tomatoes, I'm using spinach and spring mix. And this is my shortcut. I'm using bacon bits instead of frying up real bacon, but you just do whatever you prefer. And then just one red onion and some ranch dressing mix. I'm getting started by boiling my pasta. This will have to completely cool before I assemble everything together. So you could do this step the night before or early on in the day, a few hours before you need the pasta salad put together. And I also think that pasta salads are better the longer they sit. So I did make my pasta salad a little early in the day and I just set it in the fridge for a few hours to chill. While my pasta was boiling, I did go ahead and crisp up the bacon bits just a little bit. You don't have to do this, but I thought it might be better to make them a little crispier. Over here in a bowl, I'm mixing together the mayonnaise and ranch mix. I can't remember how much mayonnaise, but I'll have this recipe linked down below. I'm just gonna mix that together really well. Once the pasta was nice and cool, I went ahead and put everything together, the onion, tomato, bacon, spring mix, along with the mayo and ranch mixture, and gave everything a stir. And I did add a little bit of salt and pepper as well. This was a really good pasta salad. We've had it twice now. It's perfect for the summertime. You can make it ahead and it also makes a really great side dish or even a main meal. Moving on to the next meal idea I wanted to share with y'all. On this night, I was making something called a lazy shepherd's pie. It's really easy. It's got minimal ingredients. So starting with a pound of ground beef, I'm gonna go ahead and get that browned up. Back here in a separate pot, I'm gonna get some water on to boil for my mashed potatoes. And you can go ahead and make fresh homemade mashed potatoes, but we don't mind the instant kind. Plus it's a great time saver. I know when I'm exhausted, I don't feel like peeling and boiling and then mashing up potatoes, but I'm using two packets and I'm using the roasted garlic flavor. Once my meat is browned through, I'm gonna add a small bag of mixed veggies. This is a blend of peas, carrots, green beans, and corn. I'm also going to add one can of condensed tomato soup and a packet of au jus gravy mix. I'm going to stir all of that together really well and let it simmer on low while I finish up the mashed potatoes. Thank you. 
So let me go ahead and say I should have used a bigger dish, but I didn't, so mine did spill over some. But I'm just taking the meat mixture and pouring that in first, topping it with the mashed potatoes, and then some mild cheddar on top. This will bake on 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes until the cheese is melted and bubbly. This was so, so good. It had lots of flavor. It's also what I would consider a budget-friendly meal because there's not many ingredients, but it's also very filling. last idea I'm gonna share was a huge hit with my kids I originally saw this on Facebook and I thought it was a genius idea but they are called chicken Parmesan sliders you just need some nuggets of your choice sweet Hawaiian rolls I'm using the off-brand um, some pasta sauce of your choice and provolone cheese so the first thing I'm gonna do is get the nuggets heated through I'm gonna pop those in the oven for just a few minutes the next thing you'll want to do is cut your Hawaiian rolls in half and I'm gonna go ahead and line those with the provolone slices and one nugget per roll The last thing I'm gonna do is put a spoonful of the pasta sauce right on top of the nuggets. Go ahead and put the tops on, pour a little melted butter. I did add some garlic powder to my butter as well, just for some extra flavor. And you'll pop these into a 350 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes until the cheese melts. The only thing that I would change about these is make it more. My kids completely demolished these. They were so, so good. And I just made some fries to go with it and that was dinner. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video and got some dinner inspiration for your week ahead. I appreciate you all watching. Don't forget to leave a food related emoji in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.